When we last talked about Kirla Wolf, we came across countless other names that were tied to the investigation. These names each have their own stories to talk about, so let's not waste any time here and get right into the others. Shout out to the Patreon members as always, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by checking out the link below or in the corner. If you thought Kira was bad, just wait, because some of these people make him look like a saint in comparison. Ember Wolf is one of the many people featured within the leaks. His presence is simple enough, such as being part of the Furry Cubs Telegram channel, where you already have an idea on what exactly went down in that chat. Alongside posting images showing some very extremely unsavory things going on with the chat room related artwork and IRL activities, he would also discuss how to sneak a dog into a motel room using a variety of substances to do exactly what you think he wants to do to them. There would be some more disgusting things said between him and Snake Thing about male and female dogs alongside how they get their content to look at, before Ember would straight up send videos to Snake Thing of people doing the act with animals. Despite not being the main focus of the scandal, people found his identity pretty quick, first by a now deleted tweet with his husband showing that they traveled to a furry convention. His fur affinity account will have the alias Arrowlass, and that name led to a Flipboard account with the name Dylan, with everything else coming together pretty quickly after that. Now you may be thinking, what furry con did this guy attend? Well, during the BLFC 2017 furry convention, there was an incident referred to as the Floor 21 incident, which in of itself already sounds interesting. It turns out that Dylan here decided to get high on drugs for a night of partying, as someone noticed him in the hallway wearing nothing but a diaper and sweating profusely. They tried to calm him down by putting him in a cold shower, but he would escape from them as they went to get hotel security. He would come back to find him in another room losing his shit, so they would get him into the empty hallway to prevent him from accidentally hurting himself. Paramedics would eventually arrive and sedate him before taking him to the hospital for evaluation. According to a witness, he would come back to the hotel and immediately start partying once again as if nothing happened, much to their annoyance. There would also be this picture of the hotel security trying to apprehend him, showing our friend Dylan here going through a fun little ordeal. It seems that he's eased his way out of the situation by going quiet, but nobody will forget what he said and what he planned on doing to that poor, unsuspecting animal. Campachu is best known for wanting to brand his dog with a wire hanger for his own sick reasons, even admitting he doesn't care if they die as he just wants to get a quick process going, along with wanting to do a lot more sick things involving boiling water. He even had a close moment where a dog escaped as he shot at it, having to finish the job in the bayou as to not attract attention of the neighbors. Hell, he was even a content creator himself as he had multiple videos that he made, including his final hurrah with one of his dogs before they passed away. Campachu was pretty easy to find out, his Ink Bunny account had an Xbox gamer tag that matched, and his Steamy Fur Affinity had his full blown name on it. Soon as Facebook was found to confirm it as Sydney, and everything else was sorted together in similar fashion. Sydney here also had a very interesting way of burying his animals. Come and take a look at it yourself. Alright, this is a dedication to my dog Prince. Uh, he died yesterday, and I'm back to. We'll bury him. He then drags a trash bag, obviously full of paper, and tosses it into the river. Sydney as well seems to have slipped away from everything, but the internet will never forget the heinous things he's done. Paquito Dingo was another person whose name popped up during the leaks, with his story being a lot quicker than most. He would make a video of himself getting off to another man and a dog together, with the camera pointing at his screen before panning over to him on the couch. He would then upload the video to X videos, only this time cutting the beginning seconds showing the content on the screen as if it would have saved him. Looking up his name on Facebook leads to pictures of him, and his name would soon come to light, that being Florent, a man living in France. Now Florence's story here gets a lot bigger, as he was fully aware Kiwi Farms looking into his identity, taunting them on his Twitter account at one point. He would continue to taunt the Kiwi Farms members, before making his very own post on the site bragging about since his face is hidden in any content that he's untouchable, before going into a story about the police taking his PC and finding a bunch of zoo content, only for them to not do anything other than say he's sick in the head and needed help. He would continue to post on Twitter about being sick in the head and an overall massive freak in general, and again go to Kiwi Farms to go them on some more about how nobody tried to attack him at a recent convention or anything like that, basically just pissing him off. This is the most recent picture of Florent out there, and despite getting away with what he's done, people will always remember what he truly is. Glowfox and his history is a lot deeper than most, going as far back to his teenage years when he started giving into his zoo tendencies as you can see. He also likes to talk about supposed underage parties that go on at furry cons, and how he's been talking to an underage person recently, not only being a zoo but also a pedo. He also talks about an apparent ring that's around that does exactly what it says on screen, but to be honest it reads like edgy larping bullshit but it's still worth pointing out. He also talks about how he was 18, he was babysitting an 11 year old, well, I think you can kinda get the idea of what went down judging by the picture on screen. Oh, did I mention he also draws cub art? Given the absolutely heinous shit people were reading, they really looked into this guy and found him out rather quickly. In the initial zoo status leaks, there were two Lego pictures found in them, with one being innocent enough and another showing that Glowfox went to Log Expo, a Lego convention in Lima, Peru. During the search, people found this image on his Tumblr account, aptly named Glowfox Naughty Den. 
People find a Facebook group called Lug Peru and start digging through the members, and they eventually found a match. Get in a name and face to this monster, Philip. Soon after Philip was found out, he changed the name on the Facebook account to a new one, and a couple weeks later his boyfriend would actually message someone who made a callout post on Twitter to try and get them to take it down, while providing zero evidence to back up his claims of innocence. Months of silence would go by, and then in March 2019, he would do a stream on Pick Arda where he complains about getting kicked from the LEGO Facebook group and that the chat leaks were taken out of context to his few viewers watching. Philip has been active on Twitter as recently as January 2nd, 2023 and February 4th on his Patreon account, where he still posts his artwork to this day. Jackie Carter is another person identified in the leaks, with Snake Thing proclaiming he's a zoo suitor, which y'all can put together pretty easily. Jackie is also known to go under the name Ashton Dasheeb, and when finding his F-List account, you can see that Zoo is mentioned as one of his interests. People would even find a face pic on Twitter in his full name thanks to his Steam profile as well. Joel even had a Beastworm account with all the identifying info right in the bio, and was seen commenting on yet another similar website in whatever video in question it was. After finding that people were onto him, he would private his Twitter account, which as of today has been through a bio change, meaning the guy is still around. While not very much here incriminates him besides the Beastworm account as those unknown images can be anything, the account still gives a lot of insight into the type of person that he is. Kintari is someone who, surprise surprise, had a Beastworm account in which he posted pictures of him and his dog doing what you think they're doing behind that blur. Another pic would come out of him and his dog together in which you could see somewhat of his face, and this led to people figuring out that he's Joshua, a vet tech located in New Jersey. You heard that right, there is a vet tech zoo out there with pictures showing him during his practice with an animal, which is downright chilling. Joshua would become aware of people finding him out and spreading the word, so he would delete his Facebook account rather quickly, and since then his whereabouts have been virtually unknown. One thing's for sure however, if you see this man at your local vet, tell the staff immediately and get ready to call the police in case things go very south very quickly. Jay Shepard was someone who was talked about in the leaks, first for apparently being into a lot of really questionable stuff, and then straight up sending videos of dogs and people together doing exactly that. When taking a look at his Twitter, people found a picture of him with his face at the hospital, and others noticed he had a rather unique looking license plate in his Jeep in another post. People will find his Foursquare account in which they noticed he liked a place called Shepherd's Sanctuary, which included a picture alongside the post. People quickly found a location, and this will lead to them getting two names to dig through, and soon enough they found a Jeep on the account of one Zachary, and eventually pictures that matched his face perfectly. When scrolling through Zachary's Facebook, you can see a lot of posts of animals up for adoption, but when taking into account the dark secrets this man had, you can't help but get a nasty feeling in your stomach when looking at them. Cupid the Deer had actually been known for a while at this point, as in early 2017, a leaked message of him bragging about doing it with his dog in his fursuit would come out, with someone named Nacho Doggo coming to his defense shortly after saying it was fake. This was just the beginning though, as later on that year a news article would come out about a man getting charged with assault on a dog, in which the owner found out after they broke up in September through a leaked video in which they were under the impression they took it out for exercise that day in May. Another man would get charged 10 days later, in which the article goes into detail on how the two threatened a killer for not taking up their advances, stating that one of the men posted bail while the other was still under custody. As you can put together by now, this was all between Cupid and Nacho, with the third person being someone named Noodle Scoop. Cupid was the one that posted bail thanks to help from his parents, and it was also discovered around this time that Cupid used to go by the name Bluetooth Husky. Cupid was still due for court as people would watch for any updates on this case and how it was going, but someone would discover his Beastworm account and see that he was still flying around places and trying to meet up with other people's animals. In April 2019, after the knees made into furry circles, he would make a sob story notes apology about how he's trying to get better and he made mistakes and whatever after people discovered he has a history of messing with dogs. It was discovered during this time that he pled guilty to a felony for animal cruelty but got off free for some reason, and the very next day people see he was still hanging around furry telegram chats as if everything was normal. That same day people would also find out he still had his airline job as well, and once he was made aware people were watching him, he would go private on Twitter to try and get them off his trail. The full legal documents for his case would come out a month later, and since then his case has gone cold. That's what I would normally say, as two years later it would come out that Cupid the Deer forced himself upon a minor, recorded it, and sent it around his group chats until someone reported him to the police. On May 6, 2022, Matthew Gabowski would plead guilty to possession of CP and get sent to jail for 5 years with 7 years probation, with some sort of justice finally being served from this ordeal. He is currently located at the Victorville Medium Federal Correctional Institution. Takeda is the hardest person to cover in this mess, because he was under the moniker Mr. Bitch Tits when talking with Snathing and nobody could put a name to the man at first. The things that point in the direction that it's Takeda was a chat showing that he was an admin in the Zoo Furries group chat at one point in time when the leaks had been discovered, but then deeper in the logs he would straight up admit that it was him under an alt account because he didn't want to tarnish his name. After the leaks dropped, Takeda would delete his Twitter account almost instantly, and since then has basically gotten away scot-free. People will find out that Snake Thing at one point talked with the real Takeda Telegram account, in which he referenced the situation that Nacho Dago got herself in, showing he was deeper in the zoo circle than initially thought. That's only shown further as I'm talking on his alt account with Snake Thing, he would go on about how his friend was looking through his zoo collection and was enjoying the rougher stuff he had on his hands. 
Takeda was still active under his AD Twitter account after all this, however, as you can find multiple Twitter posts with the handle, and when digging some more, I found the account once again with the new handle as he keeps trying to run away from his past. It's safe to say he never faced any legal or even social repercussions due to running instantly, but this video will be a reminder that he can't run forever. Corey TWC went by the name of Elite Knight and was already well into his actions involving animals by the time the leaks came out. In fact, he was a creator of this very video on screen in which those blurred out objects from the Bad Dragon website are put into the dog. People will find an account by the name of Corey TWC that had a very similar looking character to the one seen in the video, and so they kept digging. They would eventually find a Steam profile on Facebook accounts and even a SoundCloud account, where his only remaining follower after it was cleared out would be someone in Florida. People found an old photo that Corey took of where he was at one day, and then an old Reddit post where he was asking where to find some scrap metal in Tampa, Florida. Corey would eventually confess to everything on his Fur Affinity account in a long post line about how he was slowly brought into that side of the internet by snake thing and such, which as we already saw, he was far into it already. It's one giant cult fest full of someone who got caught trying to pity his way out of the mess, and so people officially confirming it to be him 100%, they kept digging some more. He would make a super long-winded post a few months later in January 2019 about the furry fandom and how he got into it and how he's now going to take a break because of all the drama that comes with it and all that. That break would be short-lived as someone would find his identity out and contact the police, and on February 11, 2019, Christian story Oscar Nichols would be arrested by the police and charged with aggravated animal cruelty, and 10 charges of prohibition in connection with obscene material would be added the next day. His dogs were rescued from him and he was bailed out on his charges, and he is currently awaiting trial. Zyra was very fleetingly mentioned at first in the logs, as he was being referred to as ZB by Snake Thing in order to protect his identity. Snake Thing would slip up and say his name to someone named Tane, who would remark that he's actually worked with him before at a con to nobody's surprise. He would start to talk about how Zyra wanted to experiment with animals one day and push his boundaries so to speak, also noting that Zyra had a lot of money and it wouldn't be a problem to set things up one day, with the both of them reacting positively to each other's statements. Of course it wouldn't matter that much because it would come out that Zyro spoke to Snake Thing himself, mentioning how the images aren't zoo related but rather his first suit he has sex in and to keep them on the down low. Once his name was involved with the leaks, Zyro would completely dip, deleting all his social media accounts he could. He would forget to delete his IRL account however, where he had a post from 2014 showing him working at a furry convention booth. Jimmy here would go silent for a while before getting back to posting, mainly pictures of his dogs throughout the months as time went on. He eventually discovered people were on his tail again, and so private the account for a period of time, and as of today it's completely gone from the site. While a lot of what is said about this guy only comes from the mouth of Snake thing, the message where he specifically mentions it's not Zoom makes me wonder what other skeletons Jimmy has in his closet, and if they'll ever come out one day. Cepheus has messages with Snake thing in which he says three puppies, well, you can fill in the blanks of the letters left available to see. He said he also has a thing for Crush, which is exactly what it sounds like, and sent pictures of that to Snake Thing as they spoke with each other. In more leaks, he's also said he's cleared his computer before in fear of people finding what was on it. Now while there was nothing showing him doing anything to animals just yet and rather gruesome messages only, people were already on the case to see what was up with this guy. It was only a matter of days before they would find a video in which he was interacting with this dog in expected fashion, and so the info would be forwarded to the Austrian authorities as that's where he was living. During all this, Cepheus would put out a message on his Fur Affinity account saying that he was investigated but not charged or caught with anything, basically bragging about getting away with what he did. People will then find his Twitter account puppy Sefi, in which they confirmed it was him as the Photoshop effects matched up with the one seen on his Fur Affinity account. He would shut down both accounts soon after, but then would pop up again as people find his next Twitter account, Xanatos Puppy. He's now an escort located in Berlin, and even has an account on the hub posting content there as well. He's also a photographer for the Bayern Furs, a furry group located in Bayern, Germany. His Twitter is currently locked as of this video, but checking his social blade you can see it's still quite active. Cepheus may have gotten away with what he did, but someone in his current circle will eventually come across evidence about him and question him about it, so we'll just have to wait and see. Tane had his own thing going on too, with some conversations with Snake Thing showing the two discussing their interests in gore and whatnot, with Snake Thing trying to get Tane into it after seeing him gauge his interest for a moment. Tane would talk about the different ways to get drugs into someone's system, saying how he saw it go down at a furry con once. This would spin off to them discussing the plan to straight up drug someone, quote, preferably in a suit, ass up and pass out at the edge of a bed. Saying how they would set up the trap under the guise of a house party, before later on the two of them confirming the person in question to be Nacho Doggo. They would also talk between each other about renting a cabin in the woods together for a fun little vacation, only for it to turn out they actually planned to drug the wildlife for other activities, with Snake Thing even referring to them as toys, because that's exactly how he views animals in his head, just a bunch of toys for him to play with. Tane even seems to know some other zoos like him in Nebraska, talking about how he met up with them at a farm and how they got a dog in on their late night action during his stay. Snake Thing would also talk about someone planning some RLC, which stands for Real Life Cub, and drugging them as well in one leaked message, and in another Tane will hint at recording himself doing it with a little youngin, and that he doesn't want the video to end up in the hands of the rest of the sick people like him. 
Where things get interesting is at Dogpatch Press. Someone who's been covering this story on his website will get into contact with Liko, Tane's partner at the time. While the leaked DMs are nothing of vast importance, the very first one of Liko telling Dogpatch to not include Tane's name because it could affect others was an obvious attempt at protecting his name. And later on, Liko's stance was now that Tane was actually setting up Snake Thing the whole time and was trying to get info to report him to the police. Of course he was just lying, as Tane had been posting on Twitter about a recent plane trip to a rural area somewhere and how his glasses got chewed up by a puppy, only for the same exact kind of message to be said between him and Snake Thing in the late DMs, showing that Tane wasn't running no op and was deep in the trenches. Later on, Dogpatch would find out that Liko was part of the staff at PawCon, a small little furry convention, and that when he tried to bring up his grievances to the staff there, they were stonewalling him and not letting him get very far. He would even learn that the con chair, someone named Lever, was actually Liko's current landlord alongside another person protecting Tane named Ratchet Fox, and they've had plenty of house parties together before. He would go to the con itself and try to talk to Lever himself only to get blocked from asking about Tane, and then find out that Lever has an F-list where Zoophilia is listed as one of his favorite things. Dogpatch would try to talk to Lever on Telegram one last time only to get told off and blocked, meaning that the big names at PawCon who had ties to Tane didn't want to look into it either because they're his partner or had similar interests in the man and didn't care. Remember the Zyro stuff earlier and how Tane exclaimed in excitement how he worked with them before? Turns out Zyro had ties to the brony fandom's most popular website Equestria Daily at one point, was a staff member at multiple conventions, and how Liko was a staff member in a similar one that Zyro was at, showing how all these people are interconnected in one way or another. Dogpatch would contact a board member of TFF named Sovereign to ask if Zara was still on staff, only to be met with nothing as they would try to say he was just witch hunting and that it sucks it doesn't go to cons anymore before wiping the chat, blocking him, and going private on Twitter. Not all is bad, however, as another convention named Further Confusion would respond professionally by updating their code of conduct when Dogpatch made them aware of his grievances. TFF would then add a similar rule afterwards, possibly after seeing how other cons are treating the situation and not wanting to get caught in something, or possibly because they came to the right conclusion on their own accord, nobody knows. Another screenshot would come out of Snake Thing teaching Tane and others how to get rid of evidence on Telegram 2, again showing just how deep Tane is in this entire mess. Dogpatch will leak out some more info about Tane in another article he wrote, which starts off with this screenshot of Snake Thing and Tane talking about hooking up with an unknown party in a few days. It turns out Tane had recorded a video with the minor involving exactly what you think is going on, with said video making its way to the police after they were made aware of it. Dogpatch would verify that it was indeed Tane in the video as it was his fursuit being worn, alongside rumors of another video being out there but nothing to go off other than just whispers in the wind. Where things get even weirder is that despite everything about Tane being out there, people were still trying to defend him in what can only be described as sheer ignorance or perhaps something more. Another screenshot would show Tane and Snake Thing talking about trading videos on minors around, with Snake Thing mentioning someone named Sanji at the very bottom there. It's after this article where his case gets mostly cold. Despite knowing the police have the video in hand, nothing has been heard from Tane or any of his associates publicly, other than an instance in January 2021 when people saw him donating money to an audio company. Oh, but it wasn't just any audio company, as the fundraiser was started by none other than Ratchet Fox and Liko themselves, two of the people known to have been protecting Tane throughout this whole ordeal. People noticed that Tane's name was unedited to not appear after they caught wind of people noticing, and while there's no hard screenshots, it's pretty easy to put two and two together as to why the name was all of a sudden gone. Ever since then, Nicholas's case has been dead in the water, so we'll have to wait and see if more of his dirty laundry gets leaked to the public or if the police ever charge him for that video, but until then, everything has gone silent. Sanji is the creator of Inked Fur, a printing company and art site pinned at furries, and has been around convention centers in their own panels. They are also known for their admiration of cub images, and during a Twitter spat when two artists were arguing with each other after cub images of Simba the Lion from Lion King were posted, Sanji would make an extremely suspect message about his admiration for Simba. Lo and behold, it turns out that Sanji is a convicted pedo to the surprise of literally nobody. On April 22nd, 2018, his record would get expunged, letting him finally start moving back up in the world and maybe get a real job one day. Of course it comes to nobody's surprise that during this process, Sanji failed to tell Zora he was in contact with Snake Thing, and as you've seen so far, he ain't exactly the best person to exist. Their conversations together are by far the worst of the bunch, so let's not waste any time here and get right to it. While Sanji didn't partake in any of the zoo stuff we talked about, he instead decided to give into his past tendencies and chat alongside Snake Thing about his admiration for RLC content, with Snake Thing making it very clear after telling a very graphic story to him. Sanji would even point out that his mom seems a bit naive, with him saying that she knows about his interests but doesn't really care about it before making a very sick joke. Snake Thing would talk about hugging a child and how he felt a certain type of way when doing it, with him pointing out in another conversation that he hasn't seduced anyone in a while until recently. Sanji would seem to have a mental break and tell Snake Thing that he's using him for his own gain, except this was actually because he was jealous of him and he would love to do it again but he's been to jail and fears of screwing up his life once more. Sanji would then talk about how he's talking to a minor in San Antonio, Texas, and Snake Thing would tell him to secretly record when they do the deed together, before getting into a conversation about showing somebody part of something, with Sanji replying that it could be a bad idea if the person tells his mom. 
Of course, this is going in the direction you think it is, as Snake Thing would then talk in graphic detail about how he showed his 9 year old nephew images of Sanji in his bedroom one day, and his story so grotesque it makes my skin crawl reading it over for this video. After the logs came out, people start to drop their support for Inkfur after realizing a practicing pedal was the owner and was still preying on children. Sanji would be taken off as owner on the official Inked Fur for Affinity account, so people would dig around and find out he had romantic interest in Snake Thing while referring to him under his other name Nelzar, stating at the end that he improved 180 with irony so thick it's blinding. More posts to show Sanji saying that he has cancer but it doesn't seem like it'll be anything crazy on his body, and he would delete criminalizing journals from his account after he noticed people were looking into him. Sanji would also take away his ownership notability on the main page as well, yet when taking a look at Yelp reviews for the site, he is seen being the one to reply to a grievance as if he was still an employee. People start to wonder if he would show up at Midwest Fur Fest as Inked Fur had a panel they were running, a furry convention that brands itself as safe for kids to attend. To the surprise of fucking nobody, Sanji was seen manning the Inked Fur panel despite being a known pedo and one whose messages incriminate him far more than most people in this video. Twitter users would start to spread his Kiwi farm start around and make people more aware of him, but this would be to no avail, as PawCon 2018 would have Inked Fur as a panel despite the news being out there already. An email leak would show Sanji still referring to himself as owner of Inked Fur, and the Inked Fur Twitter itself would post a message to make people feel sad for a pedo going under treatment for cancer. Sanji would then be spotted at Arizona FurCon 2019 manning the Inked Fur panel, despite his past being well spread around for over a year at this point. In June 2020, people check his LinkedIn and see he was still the owner of Inked Fur. And two months later in August, Sanji was somehow able to get a job within the US government, most likely to do IT work. Sanji would also get active on Fur Affinity once again, and even make a journal post saying that someone from Kiwi Farms was trying to spread rumors about him which is a total lie, and still admits to liking cub images among the lying and coping that people are still wanting justice for those heinous messages he sent. Sanji has still been active on his Fur Affinity account liking artwork almost every day, with this journal post dated February 11th, 2022 stating that he's still the owner of Inked Fur, meaning that the furry fandom has let a literal pedo back into their ranks instead of casting them out like they deserve to be. I can't say I'm shocked given all we've gone through today, but it's still disappointing to see. If you're wondering why Snake Thing has been such a reoccurring character throughout these leaks, that's because it was his account that people got the messages from. Snake Thing had a kink for someone getting a hold of his messages and holding it against him, so someone did just that and leaked them out for the world to see. Given everything was from his phone, authorities are right in this case, as they would arrest him on October 26, 2018 for crimes against animals. However, just a few days later he was released from jail, and people confirmed because the district attorney was pursuing more charges and they couldn't legally hold him anymore, basically meaning he ain't out of the water just yet. On Christmas Day 2019, people noticed that he was booked in jail once again, and found out weeks before on December 4th that he was charged with 7 counts of encouraging child abuse in the first degree, 19 accounts of the same thing in the second degree, and 5 counts of encouraging assault of an animal. He would end up pleading guilty to 6 first degree charges and 4 second degree charges with the animal ones completely dropped, and on March 9th 2020, Levi Dane Simmons was sentenced to 25 years in prison. He is currently located at the Snake River Correctional Institution and will hopefully meet his demise there before he has any chance at being released. As you can tell, the furry fandom ain't exactly looking too hot after all this mess. We went through over 10 plus names in this video alone, and trust me, there are so many other accounts in the Zeus Sadist Leaks that had no ties to them, but I'm willing to bet there's a couple more Takitas out there on alt accounts who are doing this activity as we speak. I'm glad these people got exposed, but going through this had me shocked at just how little the higher ups who run furry conventions care about everything. You saw how deep it ran, multiple people caught here worked a convention on staff, one of the owners is a zoophile himself, and Sanji has been at multiple fur cons since and is probably going to be at one soon. The corruption runs far deeper than I ever expected, and I'm willing to bet there's a lot more dirty laundry waiting to be aired out, we'll just have to wait and see. It's unfortunate that most of these people got away scot-free and never faced any legal or social repercussions, but thanks to the people on Kiwi Farms, nobody will ever forget their identities and what they've done. Now it's not just the furries that were caught in this mess, as there were people who didn't affiliate with the fandom at all who were caught in the leaks. With the few being so heinous and vile, it makes my stomach churn just thinking about the things they've done. That's for another time however, because these people deserve their own video to be spoken about, because just when you think it can't get any worse, it does.